A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Till the 27th of September, 8% of everything apparel, engineering clock, fresh new memes over on stemmerch.com. Check it out using the code <laughs> 420STEM at checkout. So don't miss out on that. We got some great STEM stuff over there. Other than that, recently I have posted a highly comfortable meme over on my um, uncomfortably cursed <laughs> math meme site on Twitter and just take a look at it, okay? We are squaring a matrix with those entries and what we are going to get out on the other side are just the digits doubled. And this result is quite peculiar and you can generalize it really nicely and it has to do with a major result in linear algebra and it's just great overall. And this is a part of mathematics gone wrong and right that we are going to talk about today. Okay, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So I hope you're going to enjoy this video. At first, I would like to state my initial thoughts on that. So it's really easy to see that what we have in here is a matrix just multiplied with a scalar. But what is the scalar exactly? The scalar is 11. I mean, 3 times 11 is 33. Um, 4 times 11 is 44 and so on. So we are multiplying with a scalar of 11. And this right here is just our matrix that we had initially. So this is a nice um, little rewriting that you can do at first. And this makes it kind of more beautiful because what we have here is we are going to raise a matrix A. Okay, let's, let's call it just A. We are going to raise a matrix A by a power of 2. And what we are going to get out on the other side is 11 times the matrix A. Why am I writing my ones like this? This is really annoying. It's because of school life here, because the children um, write the ones like this. Um, it's kind of weird. I have to figure everything out in my head and I don't want to write the ones like this. I, I hate writing the one like this, but I kind of have to do in the school. Never mind. So this is what we have here. We are squaring a matrix and we're going to get the matrix on the other side just with a scalar in front of it. And this result in itself is quite peculiar. And my first initial thought that came to my mind how I could approach this problem was by uh, diagonalization. A weird word to say, try it out for yourself. Go to the mirror, say diagonalization, snack, 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 and all of this three times. So diagonalization, snack, 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 diagonalization, snack, 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 and so on. Okay. And then snack is going to appear in front of you, but diagonalization whatever <laughs> this is supposed to mean. And well, we are going to go through a tiny little bit of diagon diagonalization action and we are going to see how it turns out. This was my first initial thought when I saw this. Because diagonalization is going to make matters kind of nice if you deal with matrix powers, hence the idea. So let us take a look at the characteristic polynomial in A at first. So the characteristic polynomial is just, I'm going to write it out, this is the determinant basically of A minus the eigenvalues that we are going to get times the identity matrix in the certain dimensions, so the 2 by 2 identity matrix. And all of this must be equal to zero. This is what we have. This is the characteristic polynomial and we want to solve for the eigenvalues. Okay, let us write everything out. If we were to write this out, then a minus lambda times the identity matrix is just going to be three minus lambda, four, six, eight minus lambda. If you write everything out, then you um, are going to see this pattern immediately. It just works like this. Take a look at my um, diagonalizing Fibonacci stuff and so on for uh, further information. Okay, so what we are going to get at first, so we are going to get a determinant out on the other side and we are going to get 3 minus lambda and then 4 and then 6 and then 8 minus lambda. Getting the determinant is really easy. I mean, we are going to multiply those two together. We are going to get 3 minus lambda and then times 8 minus lambda. And then negative 6 times 4 is negative 24. And all of this must be equal to 0. And now you could um, store for the lambdas regularly, but it's really easy to see what the eigenvalues need to be. So at first we could have the situation that we have eight times three, for example, three times eight, because this is 24 and adding the, uh, the, the additive inverse to it, it's going to give us zero. So if one of our lambdas would be zero, so for lambda being equal to zero, that's the first eigenvalue, we are going to have this equation being true. Now, what about the other eigenvalue? There's a very nice value, which is going to turn this three into an eight and this eight into a three, making this 
e equality true yet again. It's really easy to see if we plug in 11. So 3 minus 11 is going to give you negative 8 and 8 minus 11 is going to give you negative 3. Negative negative is positive 3 times 8 24 and so on. And we have another eigenvalue lambda 2 being equal to 11. Okay. Those are our two eigenvalues. We only have two because it's a second degree polynomial, a two by two square matrix. We have an eigenvalue of 11. So, so if we were to solve this diagonalization problem, we would get that the matrix A can be expressed as some inverse matrix S, okay, that you have to calculate from, from this diagonalization and eigenvector process times the diagonal, diagonal matrix times S. What's the diagonal matrix exactly? Well, it looks like this. We are going to have our eigenvalues on the main diagonal and all the other entries are zero. That's the diagonal matrix. Okay, it's going to look like this. And this is also kind of peculiar because this right here can be brought to the outside. 11 is a common scalar of all of those entries, meaning this is hence nothing but 11 times the matrix 1, 0, 0, 0. And if we were to square our A, we are going to get an even nicer result because if we take a look at A squared, if it's diagonalizable, then we are going to get out that this is the inverse of S times T times S times the inverse of S times T times S. S times the inverse is going to be just the identity matrix, it's going to cancel out basically to the identity matrix, leaving us with S inverse times T squared times S. And t squared is going to be exactly, so s inverse, times 11 squared, because this right here is our t, times 1, 0, 0, 0, and the whole thing squared, times s. And basically, if you were to solve for your s a tiny little bit more, well, then you are going to get two matrices out, which are kind of the same. They are kind of symmetric, just with a few wrong signs. And this is where I thought initially where the 11 comes from, but there's another reason behind it. So this didn't lead to anything too much. This was my first initial thought. That's why I thought, well, why not take a look at just a nice two by two generalized case, okay? We are going to assume that we are squaring a matrix with the entries A, B, C, D. And we are going to see what it's equal to. Namely, it must be equal to 11 times A, B, C, D. Hmm. Okay, this is what we are going to solve. And you know two matrices are exactly equal if their dimensions are equal and the entries are equal. So we can just compare entries, solve systems of equations, and maybe we are going to get something nice out on the other side. Okay, now we are going to solve what this is at first. Um, if we were to square this matrix, we are just going to put those entries on top of the other entries. Meaning we are going to get, if we were to put this on here, a squared, so a times a, so this is a squared and then bc, so plus bc. Simple matrix multiplication. If we were to put this onto here, we are going to get ab and then plus bd. Okay, this is going to give us b times a plus d. Okay, let us continue. Next up, we are going to get, if we put this on here, we are going to get ac plus cd. So this is c times a plus d. And the last one, okay, we're going to get a d squared and also bc. d squared plus bc. Okay, matrix multiplication done, that was easy. And now we can basically compare entries. We're going to have a system with four equations and four unknowns, so that's nicely determinable. Is this a word? Determinable. This is weird. Never mind. So you have to put the scalar into here, okay? Don't, don't forget that, that's really important. So 11a, that's the first equation. 11a is hence nothing but a squared plus bc. Next equation is um, b times ad, a plus d, is going to be equal to 11b. Then next up 11c, and the last one 11d, is going to be equal to c plus ad, c times a plus d. Let's put it like this, not c plus ad, never mind. And last up is um, d squared plus bc. So d squared plus bc. Those are our equations and we can actually manipulate them really nicely. So you might notice as long as b and c are not equal to zero, we can divide both sides by it, leaving us with this equation with um, a plus d being equal to 11. And this is going to come in handy in a second. Okay, what we are going to do next is, so uh, I, I try and around the time a little bit, and actually you can get the determinant out after manipulating everything. We are going to add this fourth equation to the first one. If we were to add those two together, we are going to get 11d plus 11a is going to be 
a plus d is equal to, okay, we have a squared plus d squared. And then we are going to get bc plus bc is 2bc. Okay, coolio. And you know what we have here just screams for completing the square, basically. So what do we need to add and subtract such that we are going to get a binomial theorem out of that? Well, we are going to add 2ad, which is missing, and we are going to subtract it right again. So negative 2ad. And we are going to go for this branch right here with the positive sign, just because this is going to be a plus d, but the whole thing squared overall. And we have a plus d here too. Meaning overall, we are going to have 11 a plus d, being hence nothing but, if we were to take a look at this, this is going to give us a plus d, but the whole thing squared. And last but not least, we're going to get a common factor of two right here, so plus two, and this is going to be a bc minus ad. Okay, bc minus ad, this is good. Now, we are going to make use of this fact right here. a plus d is 11, meaning this right here is 11, making this 11 squared. And what we have here is 11, but the whole thing squared. Meaning we are going to have 11 squared on both sides. We can cancel this out, leaving us with a simple equation being zero, being thus equal to two times bc minus ad. We know by the piano axioms that two is not equal to zero. We can divide both sides by it, leaving us with bc minus ad is equal to zero. If we were to multiply both sides by negative one, we are going to get that ad minus bc is hence nothing but zero, or you could also say that ad is hence nothing but bc. This is important because what is ad minus bc? Well, that's the determinant of this matrix A. A times d minus b times c. That's the determinant, meaning our determinant of a must be equal to zero. And those are our conditions. And now we can go ahead and start to produce solutions that look nice like in our, hello kitty caddies, like in our original problem. Meaning we are going to take a look at what added together on the main diagonal is going to give us 11. There are a few combinations that you could possibly go through and those should be all the solutions to this problem that we're having. Meaning, what's the first one? I mean, we're going to have obviously one plus 10, but this is not going to look good overall because, well, if we have 10 times 11 overall, this is going to give us 110, doesn't look good. This is not what we are striving for, basically, when taking a look at this very comfortable meme. But it's one solution to this problem. Also, we are going to have, okay, we are going to have two plus nine, we are going to have three plus eight, we are going to have um, four plus seven, and we are going to have five plus six, and all the other ones are just permutations of the others, okay? Addition is commutative. Okay, this right here corresponds to a plus d. Now, what other condition do we have? We have that a times d must be equal to b times c. Oh, also, one thing that should come to your mind here, if the determinant of the matrix is zero, our matrix is not going to be invertible. Meaning all matrices that satisfy this highly comfortable um, property are not going to be invertible. This is really sad to be honest. Now next up, what about a times d? a times d is going to be one times 10 is 10, two times nine is going to be 18, then three times eight is going to be 24. After that, we are going to get four times seven is 28 and five times six is going to give us 30. That's a very nice pattern, adding eight, adding six, adding four, adding two. This is weird, Never mind. <laughs> and you know, a times d must be equal to b times c, okay? This is important because now we know what B and C must be, okay, our entries. This has to do with prime factorizations. B times C must be equal to A times D, meaning B times C must be five times two to get ourselves 10. So we have, for example, B being equal to five and C being equal to two. What about here? Okay, 18 is two times nine, okay, on the one hand. Um, this is what you could put here, but we also have three times six, for example. Okay, other one, um, 24 is going to be four times six. For example, this is our case that we are having, three, eight and four, six. This is our highly comfortable case. Or we could have that this is three times eight, but this really doesn't matter because we have this combination here already. 28 is going to be four times seven. Okay, or 
instead of four times seven, we are going to get two times 14, but this is not a case that we want to consider because it's not highly comfortable. Other than that, 13 is going to be three times 10, and yet again, we do not want to consider this case. So we basically have two cases that are going to look good overall. This one with the 3, 6 and this one with the 4, 6. So we have two combinations, 2, 9 and 3, 6 and we have the one given 3, 8 and 4, 6. Just as a little side note. And this basically concludes already the video. There's going to be an exercise given here that you are free to solve. It's going to be basically just a generalization of this thing. So do we have, for example, any matrix A out of the n by n matrices with real uh, number entries where we have, if we raise it to, for example, the third power, we are going to get 111 times the matrix in, in itself. Or if we have this matrix to the fifth power, are we going to get um, 11,111 times the matrix in itself? You can try it out. Maybe you can find out something. Also, one last side note. This property right here is a, uh, is a direct consequence of Cayley Hamilton, basically. So Cayley Hamilton states if you have a square matrix with three entries, then if it satisfies a characteristic equation in some way, then the matrix in itself is also going to satisfy this characteristic equation. Meaning overall, if we were to put this into more mathematical terms, we had that the characteristic polynomial in A has been nothing but, okay, we have our factorization um, of this polynomial being 11 minus lambda. Okay, I hope you can see this because 11 is, is one of our eigenvalues times negative lambda, leaving us overall with lambda squared um, minus 11 lambda. And this thing must be equal to zero. This was our characteristic equation. But if it satisfies one of these, then our matrix A as a matrix also satisfies the matrix put into the lambdas basically. This is what KT, uh, Kaylee, Hamilton, <laughs> KT, Kaylee Hamilton states. So we are also going to have that a squared minus 11a is going to give us zero. And if we were to add 11a on both sides, we are going to get that a squared is hence nothing but 11a. Okay, just as a little side note, Kaylee Hamilton works here, which is really cool. It has to do with the trace, etc., And it also works for higher dimensions. Try it out and see if you can find any more combinations. And I hope you're going to like this little exercise for the viewer. Other than that, before we end the video, I would like to thank Brilliant once again for sponsoring one video here on this channel. Today's problem was a bunch of fun and it involved just basic linear algebra manipulations to get from mathematics gone wrong to mathematics done right. If you are an avid mathematics explorer like me and like what you saw today, then you might definitely enjoy Brilliant, an online learning platform and app that has tons upon tons of amazing math exercises up their sleeve. Brilliant's concept is simple, learning by doing. And exactly this easy and approachable take on interactive learning makes their website so special. With Brilliant, you will unravel concepts bit by bit and build up to an interesting conclusion, discovering deep truths in unexpected places. No matter what you're interested in, be it mathematics, physics or computer sciences, Brilliant helps you elevate yourself to new heights by providing you with the best possible interactive learning experience. Especially interesting to me are the linear algebra courses, starting you off with the basics up until diagonalization and characteristic polynomials, which are exactly the tools required to wrap your head around today's exercise. And the best thing is, Brilliant steadily increases their library of new courses each and every month. This month, for example, they have added their brand new Infinity course and I gotta admit it was a lot of fun. I have covered it, incidentally, already on a live stream with you, my subscribers, and it was definitely one of my most fun live streams ever, if not the most fun out of all live streams I ever did on this channel. Check it out and maybe it sparks your interest for print a little bit more. But if you really want to try it out for yourself, then make sure to use the link at the top of the description with it. You are going to get free access to a big portion of print. But the best thing is, first 200 people to actually, actually make use of the link, they are going to get 20% of an annual premium subscription. And trust me, it's going to be worth it. So much content over there, it's just absolutely lovely. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, recommend the channel. If you like, if you want to support the channel a bit more, go over to Stemmerge and take a look at the memes, the memes. And other than that, I wish you guys a flamble day. Don't forget to check out Flammy 2 too. <laughs> Ciao.